Hi, guys. How are we all good? Good. I love it. Nice and interactive. We'll get back to that a bit later on. Um, so, so, yeah, so I look after, a few people know me, I think, already, but I look after the imaging, um, imaging products of the Creative Cloud for the UK. So that's uh, Lightroom, uh, Photoshop, um, and also being a photographer, the workflows for photography and photographers around the Creative Cloud. I also look after 3D and 3D printing as a kind of an extra bit to my role as well. So it's always quite exciting. So also online as well. So if you do want to follow me on Twitter, you can do at Richard Curtis as well. I always forget that bit at the end, so I now try and cover that at the beginning. So let's go through some, um, some elements. Now, Gavin's going to come on later on. When I was putting my set together, um, I didn't know what Gavin was doing. So we had a quick chat earlier on, and he said, I'm going to cover that. I'm going to cover that. I'm going to cover that. I'm like, OK, then I'll do a few other bits and pieces. So um, I was going to cover a few bits and pieces, but Gavin's going to do that, so that's great. So what I wanted to do was really go through um, one of the kind of really cool features that I use a lot, and that's called the filter brush on the graduated filter and the radial filter. How many people are using the radial filter and the gradient filter inside Lightroom? Awesome. Great. OK. It's such a cool, fast feature to do some really nice things. It works really well with portraits. Radio filter works really well with portraits, just to narrow in and focus the viewer's eye. But today, we're going to make this image look a bit better using that, using that tool. Now, this was a day when I shot this picture. It was really, um, really moody in the sky. And you know, we kind of thought we were going to get wet. We, we didn't have any waterproofs with us. And um, I just had my camera. Now, you know that cameras and water don't really mix very well. So it, you, know, you kind of get a bit edgy when things start to change in the sky. So you kind of you know, run home. But we're three or four miles away from our, from our, um, our tent. So you know, you kind of, kind of just, you know, just struggle with it a little bit. But I want to, when I show this as a kind of a piece to a, a viewer, I want to get the viewer to feel the same as what I felt on that day. So you can see, look at the image, we've got the histogram, um, and you know, everything's there, all the data's there. We're not clipping any highlights and shadows. Um, but I can check that by pressing the, the J key, as you know. Now, I always come into Lightroom, and just a, a quick thing, I'm sure you all do it as well, is I just use the basic panel to get the image to exactly where it needs to be. The, just the basic levels, blacks, whites, and that sort of stuff. So the exposure's OK, I think. I can try it and see, but I think it's OK. But I don't want to damage the sky too much. So I'm going to pull the highlights back. And you can see already, I get the highlights coming through. Everyone using the highlight sliders, right? Perfect. So the shadow slider is great as well, because it opens the shadows up. And you get a completely different picture from what I started on within, within two minutes. Whites and blacks are going to give me that contrast that I need in the sky. But I don't want to clip it just yet and put some over there. Now, I want the sky to be really moody. So of course, the there are two ways of doing it. You could use the adjustment brush and paint it in, but painting in is going to give you some inconsistency sometimes across that sky. And I want to have consistency and also speed. I want to get onto the next picture as fast as possible. So I'm going to use the gradient filter and drag it down. And you can see there that then I get the mask, and the mask comes into play. Now, the exposure, if I just reset that, um, is going to help me change the exposure of the sky and I can dial that down. And I'm getting somewhere close to where it wants to be. You know, Is that pretty dramatic? Looks like it's going to rain. Great. So, but it's not covering everything. I need to cover a bit more of the mountain. So I'm just going to drag this down a little bit and turn the mask off. Now, the, I'm going to turn this to auto, because that's going to help me go in and out of the panels. Of course, the main thing when I pull that down, though, is that it's going to um, go into the mountainside, and I really don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to use the brush. And the adjustment brush is a great way to paint in and paint out the mask and extend what I've currently got. So um, I need to go into uh, reverse mode and paint out the mask. So I'm going to use the Alt key, just paint the mask out and make the adjustment. Really, really simple. So that's been there for a little while, but I just wanted to kind of go over that little feature, because I think it's a real a really nice feature that can save you lots of times when editing your pictures. So if you haven't used it before, have a go at using it. It's really quite interesting to use. OK. So, so here's a shot that I took in uh, Bhutan. And I, I, I found these two people. And I said, would you like me to take your photograph? And through uh, a combination of signs, sign language, and, and, and a bit of voice, 
and a bit of paper, we kind of worked out that they might like their picture taken. So I said, OK, can you smile at the camera? And of course, you know, the boy's distracted with something, so that kind of didn't work. But the dad's smiling. Now, in, in trips like this, you know, you're taking a couple of frames. You're not taking too many, because it's all about the decisive moment. And of course, the second frame I shot was like this. So both are looking at me, but don't really look very happy to see me. So and sometimes you can't go back and recreate things like this. You know, you just got to go with what you've got. However, if I now go into uh, Photoshop, and I'm going to open this as a smart object. How many people are using smart objects in Photoshop? OK. Well, next time we do this, we should see more of those, because smart objects are pretty awesome. So open as a smart object means that um, Lightroom's not going to convert this into a TIFF for me. Open Photoshop. There you go. So Lightroom's not going to convert this into TIFF for me. It's not going to commit any changes yet. It's all it's going to do is send across the raw file into Photoshop with the data from Lightroom, just the metadata changes. So it means I can change that at any point in time using Camera Raw. And I think Gavin's going to show you that a little bit later on. And I've got another example of where I'm going to show that here. But of course, I want to be able to fix this person's face. Now, I don't understand how people's faces work. Um, so I don't really want to go into hardcore kind of editing. I want it to be nice and snappy, because I want to do this in a couple of minutes. So inside the new release of Photoshop in 2015.5 on Creative Cloud, you have the Liquify filter. And in the Liquify filter, the additional element is content aware, uh, sorry, face aware Liquify. So you'll see, as I bring this image into that tool, you can see that it recognizes we've got two faces in this scene. And for each face, it's analyzed and looked at where the eyes are, the nose is, and the mouth. OK? So at any point in time, across both of these people, I can go modify their smile and make them smile or make them sad. So the objective here is I want to be able to make these guys have a little bit of a smile. So when I send it to them on email, they're going to be, they're going to be happier than seeing a picture that where they're not smiling. <laughs> right? So just a little bit of a, a, a change. And you've got lots of options there that you can change around eyes and nose and mouth. So you can get very creative with this tool as well. But the idea is that I'm just going to put a little smile on his face. And then the boy here, a little smile on his face. Not a lot, just a little bit. Just a little bit happier. Nice and easy. Press OK. And it now sends it back to full Photoshop. And you can see the difference that made. Now, the beauty of the smart objects, of course, is and if you haven't used smart objects, definitely look at them, is I can double click on there. And it will open that up again and allow me to go into re-edit. So if I did need to go in and do something else around his face, maybe, this is where your ethics kind of lie. <laughs> so he's now about what, 20 years younger, maybe. So it's, yeah, it's a fantastic, fantastic tool. And just by turning on the little eye on the smart filter there, you can switch between. Completely different, right? So what can you do with that? Just a couple of, um, couple of ideas. We know there's people out there, creatives out there, that are doing this type of work. So here's an example. <laughs> and this one. So you can go kind of you know, crazy a little bit on people's eyes and noses, anything like that. That's not what I'm, what I'm about, but you, know, you can have a go with it and see. It's quite, it's quite interesting, the effects you can, you can kind of get. OK, so on some of my own personal trips, you end up being in environments that are um, hot, um, smoky, and quite challenging to photograph. Um, you know, if you've been in, say, for example, you go into a, an area like this and you're in an air-conditioned car, you go outside where it's really humid, the lens fogs up. This environment wasn't like that. This environment was full of um, the, uh, these Indian people who were at this festival. Uh, and they're smoking quite a bit of um, some unusual substances. Uh, but they're also burning a lot, of, um, a lot of charcoal as well. So I quite like this shot. I like the kind of viewer, the, the gaze into the camera from this, from this chap here. But you can't really see it because there's too much haze. So we have a new filter in the development module. And this also exists in Camera Raw inside Photoshop as well. But 
And we think this is a, a, is a great filter if you haven't used it to try on anything that's a bit hazy. So how many landscape photographers do we have in the audience? So how many times have you ever shot a picture where it's really hazy in the distance? Have a go with this guy. This is going to fix that right up. So the idea is that I can add haze by going left with the haze filter and really block it out as if there's you know, really smoky, really hazy, because that might be a creative effect you want to apply, or remove the haze from the picture almost completely to enable me then to communicate the story that I want to tell. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to rebalance that image, so I've changed the dehaze, and then I need to go back to the basic panel, and I need to open exposure a little bit, and then I can open my shadows up, and I now get to an image where actually it's pretty good to use, right? It's just a bit more communicative from what I want to tell in, in the story. OK. So here's a kind of a new, um, a, a new feature that we added to Lightroom very recently. So here's a shot I shot recently, actually. So part of my portfolio now is including 35mm film. So I moved back to film, shooting a lot of, shooting a lot of film work. So here's a scene that I shot on, on, on film, Portrait 400. But I, I was down here, and this, this lady was in the top up there somewhere. So of course, that's going to give me that weird kind of triangulation and kind of odd parallels. Now, it's OK, and I can still use that. I think it's still a nice image, and I like where she stood. But actually, you know, it would be nice to see if it was, if it was all square. So of course, I could bring that into Photoshop and use some filters to do that. We've got some great filters in Photoshop to do that. But sometimes, I need a fast way of doing it. Excuse me. So a new tool that came out about four weeks ago <coughs> is under, <coughs> excuse me, under the Transform. So a new panel. And the Transform got something called Guided. And the Guided Upright allows me to match verticals and horizontals in the scene and recreate my picture. If I click on Guided, you'll see that the widget changes slightly and just shows you um, the areas that you're going to pin this, um, this guide to. So I'm going to use this wall as an example. And this works in pairs. So if you do one, nothing happens. So I'm just going to use this to mirror. Now, this little widget, the loop that I'm seeing, is very handy. Not on this example, because the exposure is a bit high. If I change it, you would see the edge of the building in that loop. It allows you to just um, put that in the right place. So let's just do that now quickly and change the exposure. There you go. So go back to transform. Now, now I said you need two. So one didn't do anything. But I want to fix the other vertical. So I've got two verticals in that scene converging that I want to fix. And I'll fix the horizontal soon after. Place it where it needs to be, and then let go. And Lightroom will automatically, non-destructively, fix the verticals in that scene. Now, of course, when you do that, it's going to change the aspect ratio slightly. And you're going to get a lot of this white area. And that's why you have something called constrained crop. And constrained crop will actually take the white areas out and make sure that the, um, the frame you're seeing doesn't contain any of those white areas where there's no data. Of course, we can, we can fix a lot of that in Photoshop later, because we've got the content aware tools to be able to fix that. But I just want to fix the top of the building first of all, so I place another one on top of the building. And it uses the other three, and it works out that everything needs to be square. And you can see there very, very quickly, I've made the edit on that picture. So now everything's square, and everything's all lined up just by using the Transform Guided tool inside Lightroom. So pretty kind of pretty cool, pretty easy. Don't forget, there's no digital information here at all. This is just film. So it works on film, and it works on digital files equally. So a lot of power there for people who are shooting film and people who are shooting digitally. So one of my favorite features, actually, came uh, last week. So it is really hot off the press. And it's to do with Lightroom Mobile. Now, how many people have had a play with Lightroom Mobile? Great. What do you think? Amazing, right? So last week, 
Adobe is always about innovating and providing new things for photography to support the workflow. One of the workflows that we've been um, looking at for a long time and really trying to work out um, the best way of putting it in place is when you're in the field. When you're in the field, not in a field, but when you're in the field shooting images and you might want to edit those pictures straight away and then share them socially. At the current time, you have to take your laptop with you and then put your SD card in your laptop, launch Lightroom and start working with it. You can, of course, synchronize that with a Wi-Fi connection into Lightroom Mobile and start working non-destructively on your mobile device. But last week, we introduced raw support on the phone. So all you need to do now is take your phone or your iPad or your Android tablet with you, have the little connector if you're using one of the iOS devices, get the SD card, put it the bottom of the camera into the phone, and then import the pictures into the iOS camera roll. Once you're in the camera roll, you can then create a collection inside Lightroom Mobile, and then you can add photos. And when you add photos, this is from an event last night, you might see some people in here that you might see in the audience. Um, you will see oh, random stuff on my camera roll. But you'll see here there's some images that you might recognize the file format of, which are raw files. So we can now bring in raw files. Now, these are DNG files, because my camera shoots DNG. But you can bring in any of your raw files from your camera, be it a Canon, Nikon, Olympus, Panasonic, whatever it may be, and select them from the camera roll. And we're now going to bring those files in to Lightroom on the mobile device without having any internet connection. So we add those photographs through, and you'll see straight away they come into the camera roll. Once they're, in the, once they're in Lightroom, they are now raw files. So if I click on the I for information, you will see that's a DNG file, and Lightroom Mobile is now loading the original file for me to work with. So you're working directly on the raw file on your phone. Okay? So if I zoom in there, you can zoom right in, as you will be able to if you're working with Lightroom Mobile. So remember, all this is happening on a mobile device. Of course, the other thing that you might want in here as well is lens corrections. How many people use lens corrections in Lightroom Desktop to fix any vignetting and any barrel distortion? Great. So if you want to use lens corrections, just turn lens correction on on the phone, and it will recorrect based upon the profile of the camera and the lens combination that we've profiled for you. If you're using um, a compact systems camera, like a Fuji camera or Panasonic, it'll be applied automatically as you come through the process. Once that's done, you can then use the local adjustments. So for example, we now have local adjustments. We've got radio filters, and we've got radio filters, as you saw just now. So I can now apply a radio filter on my phone very, very quickly by adding the radio filter directly onto the image. And then, of course, I've got all of my controls underneath. So I have my exposure. So I can dial the exposure up and dial the exposure down. So let's put it up a little bit. I can also feather. So if I, you see the top section with the gradient? If I grab hold of that and pull it down, I'm changing the feather in real time. Any changes, of course, here are synchronized automatically back to the desktop, including the raw file that you're working on. So if you are traveling, and you've got your hard drive back up, and you've also got your phone, this is now a way to transport your contents back home, back into your Lightroom catalog without even plugging a drive in. Just go across the Wi-Fi when you're there. So that's doing it on the fly. Of course, you've got the standard things in here. You've got duplication, move, um, all that kind of stuff. So I can move that around, and you can see the mask appears, and all that kind of stuff. I've also got the before and after. So if you haven't used Lightroom Mobile, definitely have a look. Now you've got the power to be able to uh, modify your raw files and import your raw files on your mobile device. It's a much more powerful proposition. I'm going to synchronize that back. That's synchronizing there, synchronizing back to my desktop. Hopefully, if the internet's playing, if I now go into my uh, collection, you'll see that inside my Lightroom collection, I have a photo jam. These raw files have now come across from my phone 
as pure raw files into my Lightroom catalog on my desktop. And then any adjustments that I've made should come across as well. I don't think it's come across yet. There you go. It's just come across. So that has just come across. So there's a really nice non-destructive workflow on a raw file starting from your phone rather than starting from your device. Okay, so really exciting. Exciting to see what you create with that. Okay. I'm going to show you this um, feature which I really quite like. This is um, a modification or an enhancement to another tool that we have inside, inside Photoshop, actually. Now, you're taking an image like this. I saw this image, and I framed it up. I like the fact she's taking a selfie. She's got a digital camera on the side, but she's using a mobile phone to take a selfie. However, what happens in those scenarios is, because it's a public place, I'm just going to zoom in. Of course, the unexpected happens. You get other tourists coming to the frame, looking at the wall, right at the time when you took that picture. So you might want to get rid of that. So I'm going to take that into Photoshop. Now I'm going to go into Photoshop and open the original, because actually this is already a PSD. So if you've got PSDs inside Lightroom and you want to work on them inside Photoshop, all you have to do is edit the original file in Photoshop, and it will open the PSD for you. So in there, everything's all pretty much set up for me, so I can kind of go and carry on. Now, what I'm going to do here is a slight change. And this is a kind of a mother technique thing. It's not a new feature, but it's something that I think, if you are using Photoshop to do your work, it's a really nice thing to look at using. And it also keeps your files really lightweight and less complicated when you edit them later. And this is by using an empty layer. So if I just zoom in there and show you that, I've now got an empty layer above my image that I want to modify. I'm now going to use the healing brush tool. Now, because I'm using an empty layer, there's no data there. So I'm sampling data and trying to fix something. I need to work on pixels, right? But if there's no data there, I need to tell Photoshop to go through the layer stack. So for that, I can just turn on the sample or layers. Okay? And you've got multiple options there, so current layer, current layer and below, and all layers. So I'll turn on all layers on, because I'm quite lazy. And then I'm just going to zoom into this picture and fix this image as I would normally. So I'm going to use the Alt key to sample from a location. And you'll see now I'm able to go and resample, because it's a very small area. I can resample, and I'm getting the effect straight away. So I can see in real time anything that's not quite right. You do a better job than me, but in a couple of seconds, that's not too bad. But you're probably saying, well, that's great, but what's the benefit? And the benefit is the fact that only the data that's been changed will now exist on that empty layer. So it means that your files are much smaller to work with. So you can save this out as a PSD file, and then go back to it in the future, they're nice and small, and you haven't got all those layers to work with. You just got to work with the layer that had the fix. Okay? Also, if you don't like that and want to change it, it's really easy. You can either just turn that layer off, or you can turn the eraser on, and you can just erase that content and bring it back. And that just affects that one layer. So it keeps Photoshop running nice and quickly, and it doesn't lag. So that's the great thing about that. Um, And the last thing I want to show you was, and I'll show you this, even though that uh, Gavin's going to show you it a little bit later on. I'm not going to steal his thunder because it's a very different type of picture. Um, but you've got an image here. Now, I shot this in Mongolia recently as part of my Mongolia trip. And you know, this was shot really, really quick. Right? There's no, oh, it's full screen for you. There's no hanging around. You just got to shoot frames. And hopefully, you'll get the frame you want. And it took a few frames, but. You know, this is, this is running fairly fast. But of course, when you're doing that, and if you're shooting quite tight, like I normally quite shoot, is that um, something's going to be wrong with the image. So what's the most obvious thing wrong with that picture? Anybody? No. Horizon. The tail. Great. I love it. So the tail. The tail's a real problem, right? Because the tail's right on the edge of the frame. The horizon's all wonky. If I need to fix that horizon, I'm going to lose the tail. So I can show you that now quickly. Now, for me, that's a real problem. 
because I don't want to lose that tail as part of the scene because everything about those horses is part of the frame. Okay? So I'm going to go into the crop tool, and in crop, I've got these delete crop pixels. I'm going to turn that off because I want to keep all that pixel information and then show you what I mean. When I try and rotate this around, you can see when I do that, it's going to cut the tail off, and you could cut the nose off as well. Let me just correct that a little bit more because it's still a bit wonky. There you go. So when I put a crop in there, I'm going to lose the tail, I'm going to lose the nose, which I really don't want to, to do because that's going to damage the picture. Now, you can rebuild that, but it's going to take me a long time. So for me, I'll just ditch that picture. Even though I love it, I wouldn't be able to use it. But a new feature that came out in Photoshop 2015.5 was something called the Content Aware Fill on Crop. What this will do is it will automatically extend the canvas out. You know, before when we did the perspective corrections, you have that white areas. You see the same thing here, right? You see the transparent areas around the edges. Well, if I crop this now, I'm going to have to populate that with something, with some, with some data. So the Content Aware crop will take that into consideration. It allows me to extend that canvas out naturally, keeping all the elements that I need in the frame. And when I press the tick or the Go button, Photoshop will automatically crop and pull out its um, pixel-making engine and go and make new pixels for me and blend those in automatically for me. So that saved me a lot of steps. You could do it before in about four or five steps, and sometimes the results will be a little bit strange sometimes. But now, because we've improved the algorithms, you're now going to get a better picture out of that crop. OK? So that's everything that I wanted to show you from a new features perspective. Hopefully, you found some things in there that are quite inspiring and you can go out and use, especially around Lightroom Mobile. I think Lightroom Mobile is, really is kind of a cutting edge kind of technology to enable you to start working with your images when you're on the go, when you're out in the field, especially if you are doing some travel photography. But also the other features between the workflows between Lightroom and Photoshop to make your images look amazing. OK, so I'd like to thank you very much for your time. I'm going to hand back to Tony now. Thanks.